This is our ninth and uh, final presentation of the 2019 ISTS uh, client team projects. And uh, we're going to turn the floor to uh, IAAF, where they've been tasked with looking at the financial health of the athlete population and what are the increment determinants in professional athletics. I'm delighted to welcome Mr. Alicio Punzi from the IAAF as the road running manager. Thank you for coming all the way up from Monaco to be with us today. Guys, we're very much looking forward to the presentation. The floor is yours. Good afternoon. We are here to present our team project, Income Determinants in Professional Athletics, for our client, the IAAF. We have been tasked with, one, investigating whether athletes in the sport of athletics can make a living from the sport alone, and two, what are the determinants of their income? To introduce our team, you can see that we're from different parts of the world, and we're as diverse as the athlete population that we are studying. So let me ask you a question. You have here three different athletes in different disciplines from different parts of the world. Who do you think is making a living solely from their sport? Without sponsor or with sponsor? Oh, without sponsor. Without sponsor. The Japanese. Japanese. Okay. I guess none of them. Okay, so the answer, none of them. As you can see, uh, they are all relying on another form of economic activity to sustain themselves. Uh, they have other jobs in order to uh, not only make a living, but to be able to pursue their sport. So talking about the stages of our project, we have four main stages. In the first phase, we reached out to our target population, who are the ARs. ARs are athlete representatives. They are the agents and managers for the athletes. It is similar to what you would have in the movie and music industry. So we reached out to the ARs, we received their responses, and then in the second phase, we filtered down the set of ARs to a smaller number, and we used our data and, an, and analysis from the first two phases to create a profile of the athlete population. In doing our profiling, we used three main indicators, discipline, level of competition, and geographic region. And then finally, we created the survey instrument, which is our main deliverable. Uh, it is a highly customized tool, and it will be used by the client for their own further data collection and research. So here I'm gonna have uh, like quite a, a little insight on the methodology. So we decided to target uh, official athletes representative. This was discussed and agreed with uh, the client, IAAF. Uh, so then we divided our project in two uh, phases. <coughs> During the first phase, we um, sent a questionnaire but through the IAAF newsletter. We did so because it was the most efficient way to reach as many athletes as possible. So all the uh, IAAF ARs registered by IAAF were targeted uh, this way. So as it was the first time uh, we got to know these uh, ARs, the, we included open-ended questions in order to stay a bit, uh, a bit broad for them. And we got 36 respondents from all around the world. During the second phase, we were able to select the ARs depending on the disciplines of the athletes they represent. So we sent a questionnaire this time directly uh, in, to them. Uh, this questionnaire form uh, included multiple choice questions as well, you know, because we were able to adapt our second questionnaire on the results of the first one. So we also uh, did some WhatsApp and Skype calls, but we sent the questionnaire before in order to clarify what was not uh, clear, for instance, uh, during the Skype calls. And on this one, we got uh, 13 respondents also from all around the world. So here you have a breakdown of the uh, athletes' representatives. So as you can see, they are mostly Europe-based, but they do not represent uh, athletes uh, only from Europe. They represent athletes from all around the world. And this is something to, this is a really a key point, and we're gonna go further in the forthcoming slides. So here is the breakdowns of, uh, of breakdown of disciplines for the athletes surveyed. 
we can say that we have quite comprehensive coverage for two reasons. The first one is that we manage to cover all the IAAF disciplines, as you can see here. And the second one is that we, have, uh, we had 800 athletes surveyed. It is very difficult to uh, assess the total number of the athletes worldwide, but here we can compare with the, an IAAF event, which is the Diamond League in 2017, uh, which gathered uh, uh, around 805 athletes in total. So this is quite a good uh, and an interesting way to compare. So here is the breakdown by level of competition. So uh, after analyzing the, the profiling data, we came up with uh, th three different levels, national level, World Olympic Games level, and World Olympic medalists. And as you can see, the main part of them was the national, the national level athletes who represented around 75%. And another interesting thing uh, to, uh, to notice is that uh, um, on these 75% and all, all of these, uh, all these uh, athletes were both male and female, so quite a good uh, gender balance. So after analyzing the data, we came to the, to the conclusion that athletes' income depends first of all on the discipline that he or she is practicing. Uh, so we divided all of the disciplines into three levels, where the uh, into three tiers, where the first tier represent the disciplines with the most possibilities to earn, and this correlation between the discipline and the income is directly related to the uh, attractiveness degree to the public. Uh, so the second factor is the competition level. So on the slide you can see the bars with the annual income ranges with uh, three different levels. Uh, the red level uh, represents the, the lowest uh, income level which is up to 50,000 a year. The yellow color represents the middle level income between 50 and 100,000. Uh, thousand US dollars a year and the green color represent the highest level of income that is uh, about hundred thousand uh, a year so sprints and distance running especially the road distance running belong to the tier one disciplines uh, because uh, sprint events are famous for the excitement and entertainment and distance running, especially the marathons, they're famous for the mass participants. And for these reasons, these events are attractive, especially attractive for sponsors and broadcasters. So we uh, covered athletes uh, that uh, three, around three fourths of them uh, compete on a national level. And mostly these athletes depend on other income determinants additional to what they are making from their athletics uh, activity. So, and as you can see, even reaching the world level, uh, it doesn't really guarantee them they can now rely financially solely on a, on a sport. And only reaching uh, the podium on the world championship or Olympic games makes usually really a difference. So this is the third tier, the throws and the ra race walks. Uh, so uh, besides these two factors, uh, as you can see on the graph, uh, there is a significant difference in the composition of income of the athletes uh, depending on the continent that is uh, represented by the athlete. So let's dig a bit deeper on this uh, graphic here that we identified. Uh, you can see uh, Americas, Europe, Africa, and Asia. So therefore, the continents uh, are the arts that we identified as uh, relevant for our study. The first one is Europe. As you can see, it's the most multifaceted in terms of uh, range of income determinants. You can see 35% of support comes from the national federation and the local club, uh, followed by prize money, appearance fee, and then sponsorship, family and friends, and employment. There's an important thing to say, and very interesting, that uh, uh, within Europe we have identified two sub-models, if you like. One from Western Europe and one from Eastern Europe. The one from Western Europe is really dependent upon uh, uh, sponsorship and the involvement of uh, private sector. So uh, the companies that want to invest and be seen with athletics and with the, and with the, with the athletes. Uh, whereas the Eastern Europe is mostly uh, what uh, is relevant for the 35%, so national federation and government support. And this is probably like a, a communist heritage of the Soviet Union times. And uh, 
This is followed by uh, Americans. Uh, as an upfront disclaimer, this has been very, very biased by the presence of the USA because we were able to find a lot of data for the USA, many respondents, many athletes uh, coming back to us, uh, and not so much uh, from the rest of the, of the region. Um, as USA is the heaviest the presence in this, in this chart, you can see the sponsorship is the biggest chunk of the pie. Uh, ever since uh, the creation of the sports, America has been the, probably the biggest country in terms of uh, investment from the private, pro private sector. And this is important to, uh, to notice that uh, it's both on a high level and also on a low level. Therefore, we have high level uh, athletes that, that signs uh, with a big branding company like Adidas and Nike and other important brands. But also lower and regional and, pri and uh, more local uh, companies are uh, basically uh, connected to the athletes and they want to be seen also at a lower level. So the investment really covers the whole range of levels. Then we have Asia. Asia is, uh, again, is uh, Japan. We took it as a benchmark for this region. Uh, we see similarities both with uh, America and Europe uh, in the sense that, uh, as you can see, like America's sponsorship is the biggest chunk of the pie, although there is a difference. Uh, there is a very uh, the peculiarity to this, to this Japan uh, in that uh, corporates plays a very, very important part in the, in the life of the athletes. How? There is a cycle that is basically intertwined and is feeding off itself between uh, athletics, so the sports, employment, and, uh, um, uh, and employment. So therefore, the corporates basically, they uh, give jobs to the athletes, part-time or, or full-time, and then they also organize competitions. So basically, the athletes are 100% in their life following uh, the corporate lifestyle. As you, can, so as, you, as you could see also in the first slide, that so the Vish presented about the, the Japanese athlete with the corporate. And again, 10%, uh, uh, very little, uh, like in America, uh, support from the National Federation and government. Africa is, uh, we kept it as last because it's very, very peculiar. <laughs> the first one, uh, of the, of the, and the only one of the models that we identified, that is, that shows a reverse uh, combination between price money and sponsorship. Uh, in the previous ones that we saw, we tended, we tended to see uh, a sponsorship uh, being higher than price money because sponsors are much more active in Europe uh, and in America. In Africa, they are really, really little involved, uh, and uh, the athletes are solely uh, making uh, competition uh, money only from the price money if they compete, especially at international and world level. Uh, there is a, a consideration, more uh, uh, overall uh, consideration to be made about Africa, is that uh, there is a, a sort of educational and sports uh, uh, scope at the same time. We spoke with many uh, ARs that basically showed us uh, that uh, they invest their own money, they have budget within, the, within their own companies, and they basically uh, create, uh, uh, create uh, educational and sports camps where basically uh, in the morning uh, the, uh, the students uh, and students like uh, young athletes they basically go to, to school to get an education and then in the afternoon they can, uh, uh, through uh, composition of uh, uh, training and coaches, they can then pursue their career as, as athletes. Also to foster that uh, even, even further, uh, there are sponsorship, uh, there are scholarships, sorry, scholarships that are awarded by the agents to the to the best uh, deserving uh, uh, students that they can go on and pursue again, try to pursue their professional career. And then, if we sum up what we've seen so far, uh, so basically uh, our three main determinants, uh, our three main level of uh, uh, of analysis, we can then create this matrix that tells us the percentage split of, uh, uh, of the income determinants of the athletes. So as you can see on the top level, uh, we see uh, uh, the tier one as an example. So sprinting and road racing, so the most important in terms of uh, amount of money that uh, the athletes get. Uh, this is uh, with three branches, uh, is uh, connected to uh, the level of competition. Therefore, you can see the example of national level, uh, world and Olympic level, and the world and Olympic medalist, because being a medalist makes a, makes a big difference compared to just competing. And then, uh, connecting this to the uh, econo economic models we just uh, uh, described, uh, you can see uh, this matrix that uh, for each level, they describe what happens in the different uh, geographic regions that we identified. And uh, as you can see, the numbers are very, very much different, therefore um, you know, highlighting the specificity uh, and the difficult generalization of, uh, of the consideration about income determinants, and it's very dependent on the single country and discipline. So the survey instrument is our main deliverable. 
Uh, it is a highly customized tool, and the main goal, ideally, is to assist the client in their awareness and decision making regarding the financial well-being of their athlete population. We have presented here two examples of the use of this tool. So in both cases, we have a female athlete who's a javelin thrower. The difference being that one is from Europe and the other one from Africa. This one difference makes a big impact on the survey instrument and the kinds of questions that they will get. So in both cases, they will answer question one, two, three. You can see that question two, the answer is different. Then coming to question four, it is highly customized based on their responses to the first three questions. In the case of the European athlete, she will have four options presented to her. The African athlete will have three. And this is because of our research and analysis. This customization was made possible because of the research that we did. So in both cases, they will fill out the percentage that each determinant makes up of their total income. You can see the responses for both. And then based on question four, question five is again customized uh, based on the previous answers. In question five, they will be presented with different income ranges and they will select one that reflects their annual income. And you can see the response in the case of the European athlete and in the case of the African athlete. But again, this customization was only made possible because of our analysis and research. Moving to the key findings of our project to summarize, this globe represents two of our key findings. So we agree that athletes uh, struggle to make a living uh, solely from the sport of athletics. However, it is possible to make a living only from the sport when you reach the world level. And we found that geographic region uh, has a major influence on their income. We showed you the economic models of each region before, and that shows that uh, geographic region uh, is a major determinant. Then sponsorship, prize money, and appearance fees are the main determinants of income of athletes worldwide. It doesn't matter what region or what level you're competing at, these three are uh, the main determinants of your income. And then when we talk about disciplines within athletics, we found that sprints and road running, such as marathons, are the most lucrative disciplines in athletics. They offer the highest income potential, and they are favored the most by sponsors, which has a big impact on uh, their income. Lastly, we want to acknowledge that gender and age have a big impact on income determinants. However, um, due to time and resource constraints, um, we did not explore those. We recommend for future study to include those determinants as well. Thank you. We also want to thank our client for uh, their guidance and support throughout this process. to the panel, who would like to go first? Okay.